It's the holiday season and Turkey Day is here and things get hectic in the kitchen they are. Well folks, we're gonna help you out and save you some steps and some time with what? Mama's cornbread dressing the easy way. You'll have so much time you'll be able to take a nap with the rest of them. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp and the holiday season is upon us. It is what day is coming up? Turkey day. We all gonna do the hobble gobble, but what graces the table at so many places and one that always we look forward to was my mama's dressing. Now sure it ain't your old fashioned dressing where you throw in the eggs, the gizzard, the livers, the chitlins, anything you want to put in there. This is something that my mother would put together and mm, we just loved it. You can make it the night before, let it set in the icebox, pull it out, do a little to it, stick it in the oven, it's gonna save you time. So let's get started cooking this and what we're gonna do, hey, follow me on over here to the fire cause we're gonna melt us some butter and cook some celery and some onions. Well, we got her in there and got her to going. Six tablespoons of butter, four stalks of celery, and a whole onion diced up, put in there. When you can go to cooking that together, it just sends the aroma of Thanksgiving throughout the house. And I think now would be a good time to tell you anything that we use in this recipe will be listed down there below in the little description and the link. But remember, all these recipes can be and are converted into inside the house cooking. But why would you want to cook in there? Which you could come cook out here. So we're going to let this melt down this butter, let this cook till it gets good and tender, take about five minutes, stir it occasionally. Well, we have browned up a little, we do, and we don't want to just, just sit there and brown everything up to where it's just solid brown. We just want stuff to get tender, and it has got there, so meet y'all at the table. I know some of you might be thinking, oh no, he's going to break out the stove top. Well, folks, don't be kicking this down the trail till you've rode in the saddle a little while. This stuff right here is what my mama always used. I done cooked me up some cornbread. Now you can use any kind you want from Aunt Jemima to Shawnee to Jiffy cornbread. I don't care. Just follow the directions on the sack. Make it like you want it. So we're just going to start with a cup as we put. go ahead and put that in there. And then we're going to add us some chicken broth. How much chicken broth? A whole box full. Now, if and we was in the right kind of country, we could just walk right over at that sagebrush and just get us some. But folks, sometimes that stuff can be a little bitter. So let's put us a little poultry seasoning in there, which is about a teaspoonful if the wind ain't blowing. Some sage. You can't be having no dressing you ain't got some sage in it. About another teaspoonful. And y'all seen me in there in the kitchen last night take eight ounces of chicken breast, didn't have no skin on it, and eight ounces of turkey breast, put them in a stock pot, boil them up till they got fork tender. It took about 15 minutes it did. Now I like to shred the chicken, but I like to chop the turkey in little bitty bites. Whoa, <laughs> some chicken. <laughs> Beaks is what happened over there. You, you better come over here and get your sample. Are you in the Thanksgiving spirit? There you go, buddy. And you can find turkey breast at the store a lot then you just get you a small one if you want to to make this, or you can just go straight chicken. My mother did at times, but I like to mix the two. I think it brings about a little more of the holiday flair. And even though we're using boxed ingredients, folks, and you be thinking, mm -mm, we have added some great original flavor to this. Well, when you was feeding as many people as me and my mother was on Thanksgiving day, we took every shortcut we had, but we didn't cut quality. Y'all be wondering, hey, how come this video coming out on Saturday and what is the dressing all about? Well, folks, we put out a little message on our community tab there on the YouTube page, and you can see it. It'll pop right up there about what would you like to see us cook for some Thanksgiving dishes? And the overwhelming response was, hey, how about some of your mama's dressing or what used to be on y'all's table at Thanksgiving? So, folks, that's why we're putting this out there Saturday so you can cook it for next Thursday. So you can see folks, that is what we call too wet. Now, my mother used to make it just like this, put it in a casserole dish, cover it with some of that clean wrap, throw it in the ice box and let it set overnight. Some of that would congeal and set all up and spread out and you wouldn't have that much mush to it. But if you're in a hurry there and you got more liquid than what you need, then we're gonna go back and we're gonna add some more cornbread to where we can get rid of this liquid here. But we're gonna add a little more cornbread. 
that about done it you can see we've about lost all that extra surplus of juices that was running around there from that chicken broth that's why my mother used to love to let it set in the ice box all night and we're going to look for a consistency that's wet plumb through but not got a bunch of liquid in it now we're going to return back to the same vessel that we cooked them onions and that celery in. now if you're cooking it in the house preheat that oven to 350 degrees and you're going to put this in a 9 by 13. And it says grease it with butter a little, but there's enough butter left back in here that I think we're in pretty good shape. So we're just gonna flatten it out and get it level everywhere. And here is the, what you call it, showstopper. What is it? Some cream of chicken soup. Pour it right on top and we're just gonna spread it out. I like to get it all the way around here. If you're doing this the night before, don't put this cream of chicken soup on there Till you drag it out of the ice box and it comes to room temperature right before you slap it in the oven and i think i'll be needing to tell you before i set this over there on some trivets and give it a good cooking if you like outdoor cooking good wholesome classic comfort food recipes and maybe even get to see the beagle and me dance every once in a while well hey give us a like and subscribe because you don't want to miss out on none of these great things that are coming up we appreciate you watching so let's cook some dressing well, you see me set her on a tall trivet. Trivet, you say? You don't have one? Hey, check them out. We've got interchangeable legs where you can go about a three and a half or a five. I've got her on a tall side today, which is five inches. Pretty heavy around the outside edge, pretty heavy on top. Now, you see me rake all that dirt and that grass away from there because, hey, hey, a lot of dry fodder on the ground. You don't want to be catching a yard on fire. And remember what we've said before. If that ground is cold or wet or frozen, Heat it up first with a set of coals before you ever start. You won't lose that heat. Not a lot of breeze today, but we probably will rotate just a little and we'll keep an eye on this and make sure that we don't burn it. But I want this to heat through pretty quick. Pretty good amount of heat on top to where that chicken soup will all settle down in there and we'll have all them flavors combined. You can cook this a little hotter than you think you might can unless that wind is blowing a bunch. And when I said rotate, I ain't talking about changing the tires on your pickup truck. I'm talking about lifting the lid and turning it half around one way and then getting a hold of that bale with a lid lifter and turn it the other. You're evening out any hot spot in the coals that you might have top and bottom because that good cast iron is going to transfer heat. But if you got to rotate it around there to keep it pretty well even. Well, we just checked it, we did, and you could see it simmering and bubbling there really good, and that's what I was after. So when it comes to this point with them coals tied around that Dutch oven, let's back them off just a little at this point and slow them down. So we're going to come out there probably about two inches. The reason why at this point, folks, that you just won't just sit there and just boil and boil away, you'll end up making it too dry and might even burn it. Good hardwood coals, there's two ways that can really help you control your heat factor. One is the size of your trivet, short or tall, how close do you need to be to the heat or how far away, but also coal placement or where you pull them coals away from. Now, the more we spread them out there, sure, the less heat that gets there, but it's gonna be enough. And if it was windy, hey, we'd even pull them farther than that. Well, we've been on about 20 minutes, we have, and folks, one thing that when you let this set all night, you get some more of that even cooking you would get from bringing it out. But since we went ahead and cooked it special for y'all this way, we're going to do a method that me and my mother used to do. And you just take you a spatula or something, just pull it around here just a little, just to let some of that moisture seep down in there. Mm. Now, as this continues cooking, we're going to cook that to where it sets up sort of like a cake it's going to be a little more moist than that but i want it to have a little sponge to it and i want that to brown up a little more on the top so we're just going to keep cooking slow as we can just let it mind its own business <music>
Now, folks, when you take that out of that oven, you've got to let this thing set about 10 minutes where all them flavors congeal and sort of set back up in there. Now, whether you're cooking this indoors or outdoors, if you're cooking it the very same day you prepare it and you ain't got time to let it set long, you might want to use that spat spatula. Spatula. We better do that again. Just rake that stuff over. Let a little of that liquid down in there. Smooth the top back out. You might have to do this once or twice. You see me when I took the lid off there once and kick it a little or give it a little jiggle taste and it was a little jiggly in the middle. At this one along, you can sort of tap that or give it a kick with your boot or something just to make sure that that jiggle is going away. That way if you need to pull your heat in even closer. You see me pull that heat in cause them was beginning to ash out a little and I needed to increase my temperature. That's why we scooted up, put a few more coals on top, did have to rotate one more time. It's pretty firm to the touch here as you touch it like that but you want that moisture to retain in there to where you're not having that old dry dressing. You can smell that sage and everything in there. Mm -mm -mm. I've been waiting for this since last Thanksgiving. It's on the plate and we gathered at the table. But what do we do before all that? Let's bless it, folks. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day, Lord, and just the opportunity that we get to be part of it. I ask you, Lord, just to be with all of those that we're away from and be with our YouTube family and all our friends that we have made all across the world, Lord, and just bless them. Now make them ever mindful, Lord, that it's not the legs of that table that's holding it up. It's the family that's all gathered around it. We just ask you to bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to thy service. Thank you so much for my little sweet wife and my puppy dogs. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to have me a bite off the back side here. Hope y'all don't mind. Mm. See that celery in there and them little onions and them little herbies, chicken and turkey. Mm. <clears throat> Big, that is so good, buddy. It is so good. You don't know whether to be over here, over there, maybe, maybe even up there. But whoo, fine dining it is. And as always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and veterans who have kept this old country safe. And if you're serving well, no matter where you're at and you're away from your family, hey, we just thank you so much for the sacrifices that all of you are making. Now, remember, the recipe and all the links will be down there below. Some of y'all been having trouble finding it. Remember, printable recipe, it'll take you to the blog. It'll be right there. Now, we hope you enjoyed this very much. And from mine and Shannon's heart and the Beagle and the Dookie, we wish you a very blessed Thanksgiving. We do. And remember... Don't judge, folks. Just feed them. God bless y'all and see y'all down Mama's Dressing Trail. Okay, Dooker, who wants cornbread? Sit, Big. Sit down. Good boy. Dooker, you don't want no cornbread? Can you sit down? Can you sit? Huh? No? Nearly. You nearly <laughs> sat, Dooker. You nearly did. <laughs>